Hi guys, in this video we'll look at the chemistry of dienes. This is a warm-up page. This molecule is a diene, that is it has two dienes, alkenes, and it's actually also a conjugated diene. And we discussed conjugated versus non-conjugated in a previous video. Reaction of this conjugated diene with HBr can actually give two different products based on if the reaction is done cold temperature or a uh, hot temperature with heating. And the first part of this handout we'll be looking at will be addressing uh, why you get two different outcomes in this reaction and which product do you get in each case. Now there's a couple other warm-up questions here. I'll let you look at those on your own, including a couple of drugs with multiple alkenes in them. Okay, chemistry of dienes. We've already looked at conjugated versus non-conjugated versus cumulated. Here let's look at the nomenclature of dienes. The first example, longest continuous chain which contains both alkenes. And that's simple here, it's only one longest continuous chain, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, that would be uh, heptane. If it was one alkene, that would be called heptene. Since there's two, this becomes heptadiene. If there were three alkenes, it would be heptatriene. Okay, so this is heptadiene. Then we need to, need to denote where the alkenes are at. The alkenes are going to get lowest possible numbering. We see that we should start over here. If we start over here, this alkene is at the 2, 3 position, the 2 position. And this alkene here is at the 4 position. So this is 2 comma 4 heptadiene. Let's look at naming the next one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. To alkenes, it's also heptadiene. Alkenes at the two and four, it's also two, four heptadiene. What's the difference? Ah, stereochemistry, and we forgot to denote stereochemistry over here. That's the difference. Uh, both of these alkenes are stereogenic. We need stereochemical descriptors. The alkene at the 2 position is E. And at the 4 position is also E. We can put in front here E, comma, E, dash, 2, 4, heptadiene. Over here the first alkene is cis but in terms of E or Z that would be Z and the second one is E. So this would be Z comma E to four heptadiene. 
the Z is the first alkene, that's the two, the E is the second alkene, the four. This compound has two stereogenic sites, two to the two is four, four stereoisomers, there are two. We could also have the ZZ stereoisomer, and we could also have the EZ stereoisomer. But those are not shown. Okay, don't forget EZ for each double bond when possible. Let's try the one on the, on the right here. Longest continuous chain is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But both alkenes need to be in the longest continuous chain. One, two, three, four, five, six. And in that, you want to circle that. That would be a hexadiene. And the double bonds are at the, if we start over here, it'd be one, one, five. But if we start over here, it would also be one, five. 1, 5, two different ways. Well, let's let this be the 1, and that be 5, so when we start having substituents, the chlorine will be at 1, as opposed to the first substituent will be at 1. If we came this way with our 1, 5, the first substituent would have been at the 4. So we'll do 1, 5 that way. So it's a 1, 5 hexadiene. We have substituents, we have a propyl, we have a 1-chloro, uh, didn't leave myself enough room, 3, no not 3, 2, 1, 2, 2, propyl, okay, in between the dashes there. One chloro dash two dash propyl dash one comma five dash hexadiene chlorine one at a chlorine at the one chloro at the one propyl at the two that's it stereochemistry that alkene is not stereogenic this one here is chlorine and well, which takes precedence same same. One, two, three, one, two, three. The carbon chain with the alkene is going to take precedence. It's the same until you get to the third carbon. Here the third carbon has only H's. Here the third carbon has two bonds to carbon. Well, it's a longer chain. Uh, it has two bonds to carbon, only one bond to H. Uh, the chlorine is high priority on that end. The chain with the alkene is high priority here. They're opposite E. And of course the E indicates the stereochemistry of the stereogenic alkene. Uh, the other is not stereogenic. Okay, pretty straightforward. Um, I don't know, do we need to name another one? Let's see here. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, bump, bump, bump. There we go. I don't know if that's a good structure, good name. Let's give it a try though. 
uh, name that one on your own and we may look at that in class. Okay, uh, C, comment on terpenes and terpenoids. This is a class of uh, compounds that are natural products that are derived from a simple five carbon diene. That goes by the common name of isoprene. Okay, if we named it according to the above nomenclature, it would be 2-methyl-1,3-butadiene. But it's better known as isoprene. It's a natural product. But many living organisms uh, generate isoprene, and then from isoprene generate larger uh, derivatives of that from... Uh, using this as a building block and so we get dimers, trimers, tetramers, etc. For example, limonene is, if you look at the formula, it's actually a dimer of isoprene. C5H8, this is times 2, C10H16. And two molecules of isoprene react together to form limonene. There are many such structures that come from isoprene. Uh, taxidiene, and these are called uh, terpenes. Okay. Not quite sure where this name came from, but a terpene is a larger compound that came from isoprene as a building block. Uh, taxidiene is isoprene times four. Some very interesting ring molecules. These are hydrocarbons. Here we have retinol, uh, very important in uh, vision, in the eye. And it, it has an oxygen. And so it looks like it's sort of times four, uh, but not exactly, because times four would be 32. Um, it largely comes from isoprene, but not exactly. There's some other chemistry. Um, probably a hydration at one point to get the uh, oxygen added to the molecule. Um, looks like something else is needed as well. But this largely comes from isoprene, so it's not exactly a terpene, but it's called a terpenoid. Okay? Like, not a human, but a humanoid. It's like a human. It's not a terpene, but it's like a terpene. Um, but squalene is a terpene. Beta-carotene, okay, terpene. That's multiple, what, times 8? Yeah. 5 times 8 is 40. 8 times 8 is 56. And so, 8 molecules of isoprene... Uh, reacted together to form beta-carotene. Um, the anti-cancer drug Taxol, um, not shown here, but many of these come from, or natural products that ultimately come from isoprene. So this is another class of uh, natural products. You remember during test one, we saw a class uh, that we called alkaloids. Those were natural products that contained a basic nitrogen. Uh, these compounds do not contain a basic nitrogen. Okay, let's look at the chemistry of uh, conjugated dienes. What we're gonna see is 1,2 versus 1,4 addition. Now, we've been doing 1-2 additions for about a month now. If we take this diene reacted with HBr under cold temperature, we can get this product here. Uh, that's our basic uh, straightforward mechanism, H+. This is a symmetrical diene, so it doesn't matter which alkene you react. 
you're going to get the same product. You just maybe have to flip it over. I'm going to react the alkene on the left, where we're going to make cation, left to right. That would be on the right, and so we have carbocation here. Now we we should have known uh, that we wanted to make carbocation on the right because it's more substituted. But the more important reason is this carbocation is resonance stabilized. And we can show resonance. I'll keep the H there. And so this is a resonance stabilized. Do you remember the name of this carbocation next to an alkene? Previous video. Allylic cation. Wasn't writing there. Resonance-stabilized allylic cation. But to get this product, the Br minus, I'm going to show it up here. So that Br- is most likely nearby that H+. Even though I'm showing it ionized, these ions are still attracted to each other, right? And that Br- can attack right there. And when it does, that gives that product. Yes, the new H is on the end carbon. It's just no longer drawn in. Now, of course, what the bromide is attacking is really the hybrid here. These are fake structures, right? The hybrid is going to look like That's why I don't like drawing in that H. It, it messed me up there. Uh, it's not here. We have double bond between first two carbons, single bond that's bond in the half between first two carbons, and then the second between carbons two and three, double and single. Uh, the fourth carbon is not conjugated. No longer. The fourth carbon is now sp3 when it took on the new H. Here, and you have partial plus here, partial plus here. And of course, what that bromide is attacking is right there. But how do we move partial electrons? We typically don't do that. We work with fake resonance structures. Now this is called a one-to addition because if you keep track of where the new H is, want to draw it in, the new H is on that carbon there, right? It looks funny when we draw it in. The new H is there. If we call that carbon one, that's not nomenclature. There could be other carbons there. The carbon where the H is added is it's going to be called one. And then where does the bromine end up? Two, next door. If the bromine had been th there, it would have been 1, 3. If it had been there, it would be 1, 4. But this is a 1, 2 addition because the H and the Br are in a 1, 2 relationship in the product. Again, we've been doing 1, 2 additions for several weeks now.
the H, and in this reaction, the bromide is the nucleophile, end up in a 1-2 relationship. This is also called a direct addition. 1-2 addition is also called a direct addition. We've been doing these types of additions for several weeks now. Okay, this product in this case, cold temperature, by the way, if we do the same reaction with higher temperature, we get a different product. If you do it cold, you get the 1, 2 product. Now this product is known to be the kinetic product. Kinetic means rate. This product is formed fastest, okay, and thus always first. Why is this product formed fastest? It's because of a proximity effect. That's because the bromide is closer to carbon two. Right here, you remember when I said that the bromide is gonna be close to the H, the H plus? Well, if the H plus is over here, so that this alkene can react with it, the bromide is over here. These ions are hanging out together. And once this is formed, the bromide is right here close to carbon two. Again, once this is formed, these are no longer real. Once, once the H is added, we get the hybrid. But the bromide is over here near the H. And the bromide attacks carbon two much faster than if it had to go across country and attack. Okay. Cross country would be slower. All right, let's look at 1-4 additions, and then we'll come back and compare them a little bit more. Now, the 1-4 addition in this case is the same exact first step. I'm just going to repeat it to clean it up, but we could just look up there. The only difference is when you do 1-4 addition, guess where the bromide actually attacks? Instead of attacking here, it actually attacks there. Why did I say partial minus? That should be partial plus. And again, if you don't want to work with your hybrid, you can work with the two fake structures. But again, you got to remember, this is really one structure, okay? Even though we can work with two, two different forms of it, that's really not real life, okay? It's like the, the true color is pink, okay? Uh, and it's like I told you, okay, pink, uh, we, could, we could use pink paint or pink crayons, but let's use white and red. And let's just say that these blend together to create pink. You might think I'd be crazy. You'd be like, well, why don't we just use pink? And well, maybe we can't find the pink. Maybe the pink is hard to find or hard to see or hard to visualize. Let's use red and white, but let's remember that we're really only using one color. The red and white, we want to think of it as a blend, and the real color is pink. All right, if you open up a can of pink paint, do you reach in and get some white out and then some red out? No, it's just pink. But we're going to do it anyway. We're going to work with the red and white uh, forms, keeping in mind that the true structure is pink. All right. It's actually, more, it's actually convenient to do this, to, to work with the fake forms. The difference is, maybe it's good just to keep up here. 
All right. If the bromide instead attacked here, all right, bromide attacking here gives this product. If bromide attacked there, we would get this product. Yes, we would. There's a new H on the end. All right. So basically, the bromide can attack that partial positive or it can attack that partial positive. But let's do our mechanisms always with the fake structures because it's very kind of vague and cumbersome to deal with these partial bonds. Let's work with the fake structures, okay? Um, two different places it can attack. It, it attacks fastest here. Why? Proximity effect. The bromide is closer there. All right. This product, note they're different, okay? Regioisomers. The double bond is in a different region. Here it's between carbons one and two. That's nomenclature. That is not nomenclature. Here the double bond is between carbons two and three. Now, the new H is here. Okay, it's, yeah. Where did the bromide end up compared to where the new H is? If the new H is on carbon one, the bromide, the nucleophile, is not on carbon two, not on carbon three, but on carbon four. So this is a one four addition of the H and the nucleophile. Now your one four additions are also called conjugate additions because they're possible because the original carbocation is conjugated with the neighboring alkene. So it makes this um, chemistry possible from having the hybrid and then two different sites from where the bromide can attack. Now the 1,4 product here is not the kinetic product, it's not formed fastest, but it's the thermodynamic product. And when we talk about thermodynamics, we're talking about stability. And this is the most stable. Now these products are alkenes. And how do you judge the stability of alkenes? Substitution, okay? This is a monosubstituted alkene. And this is a disubstituted alkene. Did you notice that? The disubstituted is going to be more stable, and thus it's the thermodynamic product. When we talk about thermodynamics, we're typically talking about stability of the products. When we talk about kinetic product, we're not talking about, we didn't say anything about the stability of that product. We talked about it was formed fastest due to the proximity effect. Thermodynamic product is thus formed slower. Only one product can be formed fastest. It's formed slower. Okay? Why is it formed slower? Remember what we said up here? Because the bromide, which is over here, has to go across country to attack that carbon. That takes more energy, more time, etc. Okay? What we're getting at here is higher activation energy. Higher activation energy to go cross country. All right, so we sort of did both mechanisms, okay? It's the same initial step, the only to form, okay? Let's look at a reaction coordinate diagram for that, and it's back here. We've actually already looked at this. This was in uh, one of the test one handouts, the same exact diagram. <clears throat> Here's our diene. It's drawn sort of not full line bond, but sort of partially condensed line bond structure. Here are your two products, the 1,4 product and the 1,2. Okay, 
They look a little different because they're not full line bond structures, but please make sure you recognize these. Which is more stable? Okay. Well, the 1 4 product is more stable. That's the one with the double bond in the middle. Okay, die substituted. Because it's more stable, we're, we're showing it lower compared to the 1 2. Now there's a common intermediate forming both of these react products. All right, the common intermediate is right here. Of course, this is only one one molecule, right? All right, it's not two; it's only one. There's the true structure of that one thing. All right, this is your common intermediate. You could look at this. I would just say look at the two fake resonance structures and, the, and think about the composite of this being your common intermediate. From there, that's when the reaction takes different pathways. Okay. We have two elementary steps. The first step is to uh, protonation of the alkene. The alkene attacks the H plus to form the resonance stabilized allylic cation. From there, the next elementary step, bromide can attack to give one two product. All right, and that's going to be fastest. Remember, it's fastest because it's easier, and so the transition state is lower. Okay, let's add this. Is lower. That reaction is thus faster, easier and thus faster. But the easier pathway, I'll keep on drawing here, gives the less stable product. If we want to get the 1,4 product, remember we have to go cross country. Okay. Have to go cross country. That takes energy. The system has to take on energy. All right. Uh, a transition state, higher in energy. But that sort of pays off though, because then we fall down to, I won't draw that one. That actually gives the less, uh, the more stable product. Now this is kind of a little bit odd. Usually a more stable product will have a lower transition state leading to it. But not in this case. This is an exception. The more stable product actually has the higher transition state. Higher transition state energy because it, the nucleophile has to go cross country as opposed to uh, this was the proximity effect which made it uh, lower in energy. Okay. Why does cold temperature give the one two higher temperature? Okay. Well, think about it. Cold temperature implies limited amount of energy. If we're here and we have a limited amount of energy, we may only be able to go the lower energy pathway. Okay, so if it's cold, we may only be able to go this pathway. Now if it's too cold and we have no energy, we, we're not going to be doing a reaction at all. But it turns out that under cold temperature, there's enough energy around for this pathway to actually occur to give the 1, 2. 
but there's not enough energy for the other pathway to occur. And the other pathway is only going to occur with heat. Only with heat. Now, something to keep in mind here. Even with heat, which pathway is going to be preferred? The lower pathway. So even with heat, the 1, 2 product is going to be formed. Why would the system go uphill when it doesn't have to? Okay. The reason we get the 1, 4 product with heat is because it's reversible, okay? With heat, the bromide will actually come back off. <clears throat> It'll just leave. All right. Uh, that's the one four product. Uh, I don't want to lead, do that. Here, the one two product, if it leaves to get back, well, if it leaves, we're going to get the carbocation, we're going to go backwards, and we're going backwards. And then if we have heat, we can then go back over, and we can go back and forth. Here's the take home for this. If you have heat, we go back over here, we set up an equilibrium. So it's reversible with heat. One four transition state can be achieved. At this point, both products possible. When both products are possible, we're now under thermodynamic control and the more stable is going to win out. And the more stable is the 1,4 product. All right. If you don't have heat, you only form the one, two. Something very important here. Very important before we move on. I put it in bold here, okay? You guys typically think that the 1, 4 is always the thermodynamic product. It is not. The most stable is the thermodynamic product. And sometimes the 1, 2 product may be the most stable. In this example, the 1, 4 product was the most stable. Okay, here we go. I was trying to draw it on the reaction coordinate diagram. This is going forward. Uh, HBr low temperature gives the kinetic product. With heat, we can get an equilibrium. And if we can set up an equilibrium, the thermodynamic product will be favored. The equilibrium is set up because the kinetic product, the bromide, can leave to regenerate the carbocation. Okay, of course, this is really a hybrid. So it comes off. When it comes off, the bromide that came off can come around and attack at the other position. And all this becomes an equilibrium. And if you can achieve an equilibrium, your more stable product is going to be favored. And so with heat, this product is favored. But with cold temperature, this product is favored. Okay, let's look at 
trying to do this, some examples of this. Different dienes, okay? Non-symmetrical dienes. Uh, we put a methyl here. Now the alkenes are not the same. This one has a methyl group on it. ACL cold temperature. One thing I can say is cold temperature is always going to be 1,2 product. Yes, always 1,2. Because the H is over here adding to carbon 1. The bromide is nearby. It's going to be fastest to add right next door 1,2. So we already know that's going to be a 1,2 product. But which of these is going to be formed? Well, we can just look for 1,2 products. And this is a 1,2 product. The new H here is on the end. This product came from this alkene on the right reacting. This is actually a 1,4 product. You need to see that. Where's the new H? The new H is actually over here on this carbon. Chlorine is there. 1, 2, 3, 4. This is a 1,2 product. The new H is here. Chlorine is right next door. And this is a 1,4 product. Please make sure you see that by seeing where the new H is. The first two products come from this alkene reacting with the H+. The next two products come from this alkene reacting with the H+. Again, the alkenes are different. All right. We, how do you determine which is going to be formed? Well, we need to look at the resulting cation. H+. First off, it will be an allylic cation allylic that is it's going to be conjugated we would never make the carbocation non-conjugated all right we want to show resonance ah that's where my pen is, um, all right. All right, I'm not going to draw the hybrid, but I'm going to talk about the blend. The blend has secondary carbocation characteristics and primary carbocation characteristics. What if the other alkene reacted? I'm going to call that A, call this B. I'll go up here. Getting a little sloppy here. Getting a little sloppy here. Sloppy Joe. Cation is not there. You know what's messing me up? Okay, I'm trying to draw this H in. And it's messing me up. Maybe it's messing you up too. I, I don't know. If you don't like to draw in the H, but it's certainly messing me up. Carbocation is going to be on the left. Okay, double bond moves out to tack the H. There you go. Uh, and then we can do resonance. We're always going to give an allylic cation, carbocation resonance. That H, I don't like it. There's our resonance. Instead of drawing the hybrid, I'm just going to say it's going to have characteristics of tertiary. That's tertiary carbocation and primary. 
So this hybrid has tertiary primary characteristics and this hybrid has secondary primary characteristics. Which hybrid would be better? Well, it would be this one. And that was the bee attacking this way. Because of that, forget about that route. Don't do it. This is the resonance hybrid cation we're going to form. From there, we then attack. Cl minus can attack. here, or it can attack there. Alright, I hope this shows up well. I'm getting a little crowded up here. Yeah, remember that new H? Let's draw it in because that's where the H is. If the chlorine adds here, which product is that? It's that product right there. And that would be a one, two, three, four, one, four product. If the chlorine adds here, it would be that product. Okay? See, we're not going to form this intermediate, and so we're not going to form those two. Now, under cold temperature, we get the one, two product. All right? Well, there's your product right there, the 1, 2 product. If this was hot temperature, we would get, careful, the most stable. Which is most stable, the 1, 2 or 1, 4? The 1, 2 is a monosubstituted alkene. The 1, 4 is a trisubstituted alkene. Indeed, in this case, the 1, 4 is most stable. Um, so... If this reaction was done with heat, we would get the 1,4 product. This reaction will never give those because this carbocation is not going to be formed preferentially over the other carbocation. Okay, we needed a little more room there. Try the others on your own. Remember, you got to look at two different carbocations. Well, we always look at two. Really, you got to look at four. Um, but keep in mind that these are just or just two different representations of the same carbocation. Okay. Try these on your own. There's an answer key in the back. Please don't look at the answer key unless until you're ready to. All right. Uh, the remainder of this handout, there it is. I put it in the handout upside down. All right. Um, please attempt the reactions first. Second half of this handout is your Deals Alder reaction. And the Deals Alder is another video. Okay, guys, that was reactions of conjugated dienes 1 2 versus 1 4 addition reactions.